tutorial on grid generation for computational fluid dynamics. Today we'll be showing how to load and create the most simple three-dimensional grids for a basic CAD file. And then we'll look at some parametric modeling, which is in preparation for, of course, creating more computational domains. So many practicing engineers will have CAD files of the particular geometries they want to create their CFT simulation for. We'll just do a simple cylinder to show you how this is done in GMesh. So open up GMesh, as you see on the screen, and the first thing you always want to do is create a new file. So the default file is untitled.geo right in my home directory. So I don't want to work in my home directory, I want to create a new file. So I say file new, and I'll call it cylinder.geo, cylinder underscore stl.geo, and I already exist, so I'll say save, and I'll replace it. And it's asking me if I want to delete the old file. I say yes. Which geometry kernel do I want to use? I'll say Open Cascade or built in. Open Cascade is the open source external CAD engine library that Gmail uses or has a built in library. And they both have advantages and disadvantages. And you'll have to use the one that's, of course, right for you. So choose Open Cascade for now. And now we're ready. So you can see now we have created and loaded the basic.geo file. And we have that in the subdirectory called cylinder underscore stl. So let's now load our CAD, our CAD file. So I've created a few CAD files from a simple CAD program called SolidWorks, and I've exported them to the cylinder, um, basically generic files which can be loaded. So if I go File, and I say Merge, so GMesh merge operation means I'm merging a CAD file with my grid generation program GMesh. Click that, and the window comes up, and it, elects, it lets me select, say, a few different files. There's a VTK file, an STL file, and a STEP file. I'm going to open the STEP file, so most CAD pro packages can write .step files. Okay, so I select that, and I click Open. And on my screen, now I see the basic outline of a cylinder, which I created in CAD. And of course, I can create anything in CAD. I can create much more complicated things, but this generally represents my fluid geometry, it might be a simple pipe flow, depending on how I set my boundary conditions. So first thing you can do is examine it, and I've already talked about how to move the display port, but if you left click and drag, you can rotate the view. If you middle scroll, you can zoom in and out with my external mouse. I recommend you get an external mouse. And if you right click hold, you can pan. So I can move around and look at my model and make sure it's okay. Now we can move our cursor around and you'll see little highlights come up which identify the different items which have been loaded. Boundaries, a volume, it's very important to have a volume if you want to make a 3D grid, and surfaces and lines essentially. So we have lines, surfaces, and a volume. If we didn't load in a CAD, we have to create lines, surfaces, and volume to create a three-dimensional mesh. So the nice thing about CAD is we can just load up the volume ready if it's watertight, if it's a watertight mesh to create that three-dimensional geometry. So let's look at the statistics first. We go to Tools, Statistics, and we go to Geometry tab, which is already open, and we can just hit Update. And we see the total amount of memory GMesh is using is about 430 megabytes. And it says this, in, in GMesh now, from the CAD file, it loaded 20 points, 19 curves, 9 surfaces, and 1 volume. So you can see, in reality, we could probably get away with two points, maybe three lines, two lines, two curves, one line, two curves, excuse me, uh, three surfaces, and one volume. But the CAD program let us import more. If we click Mesh, there's nothing there, so we want to create our computational mesh. Click Update and close that. For now, we'll come back. And now, we're actually ready to create our first mesh if we successfully imported our geometry. We'll go to Modules, we'll click Mesh, and now we'll click 1D. This will discretize the domain on all the lines. Click that. And it says done meshing 1D. Well, we don't see anything. So let's double click and turn on all the options for 2D elements, 3D, 3D elements. So now we should see a list like this. Double clicking in the blue, you get all the visualizations. Release. Now let's see what we can do. We'll now push 2D to generate the surface meshes. So just click once, left click 2D. Let's just check our visibility again. Let's turn off 1D now and 2D elements, like 2D. 
but you see there's nothing in 3D. So now we've actually generated the two-dimensional surface meshes everywhere in the domain. And let's just make sure we have our faces set. There. Okay, so we have a 2D mesh. We want to generate the three-dimensional volume. So all we have to do is click once, left-click 3D. And it says done meshing in 0.002964 seconds. That's wonderful. And now you say, well, let's visualize that. Let's turn off the 2D face elements, double-click, and 3D element faces, and 3D element edges, too. And now you see we have created our first tetrahedral mesh with just a simple merge and clicking 1D, 2D, and 3D. Beautiful. Now let's look at the mesh statistics. Go tool statistics. Click mesh, update. We're still using 430 megs. And now if you go down, our mesh has 724 nodes. It still has 20 points from the original geometry, but the nodes in the computational domain are 724. There's 227 lines and there's 1,112 volume elements. In this case, they're triangles. Those are on the surface. Within the volume of the domain, there's 697 tetrahedrals. And that's all there is to it. Now you might want to say, I want to see what's inside this mesh. Well, we can do that. We can do that with tools, clipping. Turn on clipping. Now clipping can be applied to the geometry or the mesh. Well, we could already look at clipping and look at the interiors of volumes if we created geometries, but we've already created the computational domain, the computational grid and mesh. So let's click mesh. And now something happened. If we rotate our view, we can see it drew a line through the domain. If we click key pole elements, then it won't truncate the volumes. So now we're seeing, like if we took the cylinder in three-dimensional domain, if we cut it in half, but never cut any of the elements, we can see inside it. So you can see, we can see all these triangles in the mesh. Now these coefficients, if you're under planes, A, B, C, and D, they correspond to the equation of a plane in 3D space. So D is the right-hand side. Look up plane in 3D space, the equation. It has four coefficients. D will set the position of the plane. So if I click and drag D, I can change the value. And if you watch the screen, I'm changing where the clipping plane is. So I can move it slowly from left to right and see my interior mesh. Now just because I'm clipping it doesn't mean the rest of it's not there. So you can inspect your grid this way. You can go to Tools and Statistics and you can go in and look at your mesh through clipping. Say I wanted to move my plane in different directions, all I have to do is change the coefficients. Let's say this way. Now I'm going in the y direction. In the c direction, 0 to 1, I can see the plane in this direction. Now if I move d, I can move my plane up and down. So A, B, and C are essentially like the normal vector components of the plane, and D will represent the plane position. The minus key will, of course, flip the plane direction. Observe. Nonetheless, let's go back to A with 0 and move this here and just leave it for now and close it up. So our whole grid still exists. Now, what if I'm not happy with this grid? What if I want to change the most important factor, which is the global size factor for a 3D mesh. So double click, click global size factor, and you'll see it's one. Let's leave that there. Remember, you can always go to tools and then options, and then go down to mesh, and you'll see under general the element size factor, which is like global size factor just renamed. So let's close this and just do it from the quick menu. Double click, global mesh size factor, and let's set it to 0 0.50 and push OK. Now we'll go back and click 1D and it erases the 2D and 3D meshes. Then we'll click 2D and now it's created the surface meshes, but I'm not displaying them because of course I have turned off the visibility for 2D elements, but let's just turn it on. You see, we've also clipped the 2D elements because we have clipping on still. Let's turn that off again. Now we have no 3D elements. We left click once 3D, and now you can see our mesh is much more refined. You can see it's gone down by a factor of half. Now alternatively, if I didn't want to do that, I could simply click 
Refine by Splitting. If I want a finer mesh, I could simply click Refine by Splitting. Now watch the screen when I left click Refine by Splitting. I've essentially taken every tetrahedral and subdivided it through having each tetrahedral. I can keep clicking this over and over, and of course, I get a finer and finer mesh. So if you want to do a grid independent study, it's really easy to create a base mesh and then go in and hit refine by splitting. You'll notice every time I perform these operations, I'm getting more and more elements. Let's go to statistics, mesh, update. You'll see now I'm using over a gigabyte of RAM. You'll see I'm using over a gigabyte of RAM, and now I have almost a half a million grid points or nodes, and 2.2 million triangles, or that is, excuse me, tetrahedrals, and 250,000 triangles. So just through a few subdivisions, I have tremendously increased the number of points, which of course, if I send this to my CFD solver, will cause it to be much more expensive. So when you're refined by splitting, do not be too aggressive because, of course, you'll bring your workstation or simple laptop to its knees. You're now ready, if you wish and desire, to take this mesh, let's turn off clipping, and set boundary conditions, which we'll talk about in a later class, and run it through a CFD solver. That's it. That's how simple it is to import a geometry and, of course, create a simple mesh and then you would go through setting boundary conditions, export the mesh to your CFD solver, and run. It's taken grid generation from a CAD file and simplified it greatly for general elements and meshes. Of course, if you want to change meshing options and try different mesh generation algorithms, you would go to Tool, Options, Mesh, and you can change the 2D and 3D algorithms. For example, in 3D we use Delaunay triangulation. We could easily change it to say frontal but of course more options would have to be specified. We'll talk about these in other videos. Thank you very much for your time. I'm Professor Steve Miller.